Hey there, Postal here. So today I uh, logged into Discord and saw that there's going to be some new missions for an upcoming pilot. Let's take a quick look at uh, this unique pilot. All right, so first and foremost, if you're seeing this particular video on the day I posted it, it's the last day you can get the P39N-1. If you haven't earned that and you're close enough to earn it, get it. It's a great plane. I'm sure you've already hopefully seen my previous video on it or maybe seen some of the live gameplay that I've done in the P39N-1. One of my favorite tier six fighters uh, and a really good, well-rounded plane. Today we're gonna talk about though, on the same day that the missions for the P39N-1 end, you get the opportunity to try to earn uh, Elise Clark, called the Mustang Tamer. She's kind of unique in the fact that this is the first pi pilot I can think of that has um, a unique skill based around a tier seven plane. All the previous ones, uh, the pilots for the Tornado or the ME410, the B17G, the A6M5, the LA5, I'm sure there's other ones, most of them, the vast majority of them, are, are for Tier 6 planes. I think there's a couple for Tier 5, like the Spitfire 1A and the BF-109E-3. Um, but at least Clark's the first one for a Tier 7 plane. We're going to take a quick look at A, what her special skill set is, and then B, how we can earn it. So she's going to be available for the P-51D, Tier 7 American um, fighter, iconic plane. If you're American, um, it might be iconic for other people, but you know we're American and we tend to focus on ourselves. It does kind of bother me that there's another American something or other in the game. Like we just had the P61 and you know the, the B29 and XP54 are all these like basically overpowered planes. Um, was kind of hoping that Wargaming would be putting something in the game that is around a, a nation that hasn't gotten a lot of love recently. I mean, even the friggin' Soviet ones. But, you know, German or or British, something like that, like th throw something else in, in uh, for some other nations. This is coming from an American that likes to see American stuff. And it's like, all right, we get it. Uh, you're getting our money, I guess. So anyway, you don't need to spend money on her. That's just my little mini rant on getting some freaking German pilots or something. I don't even know. What What does she do? What are her unique skills? Well... You get five point pilot right out of the gate. Um, the first part of those unique skills go towards the P51D Master. So this adds 10% range to the forward firing armament, 5% accuracy to the forward firing armament. Um, it can only be used while you're in the P51D. And this replaces the standard protection expert skill and includes all of those bonuses as well. So what is the protection expert skill? So here's your P51D. Protection Expert is going to be this particular item. This helps the aircraft durability and resistance to critical damage equipment, and it buffs that equipment by 40%. So typically, not even typically, I only use this on like ground attackers and bombers, and to a lesser extent, some random heavy fighters. I don't typically put um, survivability and durability equipment on my fighters, Especially one like this, I typically would have this built for as much speed as possible. I probably, once I specialize it, put polished skin on here and like lightweight um, and power unit or something like that, just give a little bit of maneuverability. P51D is a very unmaneuverable plane, but is is pretty darn quick for its tier. And so I would think to la to to lean into that. But I don't know if we're going to, if this pilot's going to automatically have protection expert on there, then maybe I'll fiddle around with having some sort of durability on here. Um, and we'll go from there. I'll keep you posted once I specialize the P51D. This is honestly one of my, the P51A and P51D are two of my like least liked fighters. This plane in particular, because you get in a lot of tier eight matches, just gets owned and it's not overly strong plane. The guns aren't overly great either. That being said, adding 10% range to the mediocre 1900 foot range um, is certainly going to help. 
What isn't gonna be super duper helpful is that 5% accuracy. So keep in mind, 50 caliber machine guns are notoriously inaccurate. 5% of notoriously inaccurate is still gonna be pretty inaccurate, but hey, we'll take it. Uh, the other items really got me thinking here. So at maneuver expert, plus 4% maneuverability, which again, the P-51D is not overly maneuverable, but 4% is, is helpful. Improves the air track, aircraft controllability by 25% when aircraft wings and tail are critically damaged. Well, that sounds like... That sounds exactly like... Battle-tested. Reduces the chance of injury to the pilot by 20% and improves aircraft controllability by 25% when the wings, tail, and fuselage are critically damaged. So, part of that is built around battle-tested. But the weird thing about it is, this replaces the standard eagle eye skill. So this maneuver expert replaces the eagle eye skill, meaning that eagle eye, which normally gives you like 10% you know, boost to your view range, uh, now gives extra maneuverability and improved controllability when your aircraft wings and tail are critically damaged. So this has me really thinking. It's going to replace this eagle eye, which I actually have because I've just got an extra point on this pilot. Actually, I've got an extra, extra point I must have just gotten. I need to change this. Anyway, my point is, once Eagle Eye changes to this uh, different skill, I could still put maneuver uh, Aerobatics Expert, which gives an extra 10% maneuverability. I could still put Battle Tested, which improves the aircraft controllability by 25% when your aircraft wings, tail, and fuselage are critically damaged. That, in my mind, is telling me that the aircraft controllability with both battle tested and this new skill is going to be somewhere between it could be up to 50 percent uh improved controllability maybe as little as 33 percent but if those are building off of each other that's going to be pretty significant having maneuver expert on a p51d you really will have the ability to still be functional even if your tail and, and wings and things of that nature are knocked out so it kind of leans into that protection expert as a possibility we'll have to see i need now I'm, uh, I'm wanting to try to get my p51d specialized so i can mess around with different builds and figure out what might be best to put elise clark in and those are again those are just the unique skills that you get with her you obviously can add the, the normal skills that you would typically put on there you might lean in on uh putting that aerobatics ex aerodynamic no aerobatics expert on there to get that extra maneuverability uh, putting things on there like the engine guru to give you the extra speed it could all work out we'll see uh p51d might turn from a middle of the road tier 7 fighter to something that's uh, actually enjoyable to fly so how do you earn her well first and foremost uh, you have one full month to do this so there are 15 missions i haven't gone through any of them yet so we're going to go through them together uh, you have to be in a tier 4 or higher aircraft uh, to be earning these particular missions and obviously you want to make sure that you click the box to allow you to actually start these missions don't just jump in the game and start the missions and thinking that it's automatically going to go towards the missions you want to make sure that you're going in here on the left hand side on the home screen and you're going to the view special missions and yada 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 you'll see it under current you'll have the ability to either click there or oh i need to get 10 more sectors today or um, you'll have another option up here to click and follow through like where you would with um, with like the vampire missions and XP 55 missions. I'm not sure where they're gonna put it, but we'll find out. So what are the, the 15 missions? So let's start right here at the top. Each of these missions you have, uh, once you complete the missions, you get a, a mini reward as well. So even if you don't think you can earn this particular um, pilot, I'd still recommend attempting the missions just because you'll get some of the rewards and some of the rewards are better than nothing. So for instance, mission number one, earn 45,000 personal points in any number of battles. Even if you only earn 5,000 personal points in a battle, you know, it's going to take you nine, you know, nine battles to do that. And you get a free day of premium time. Um, I would recommend if, if you're not able to get this mission done you know reasonably quickly and you don't have any premium time like you're this is going to be your only day of premium time complete the mission at the beginning of one of your days so that way you get that whole day um, to be able to to use the premium time i'd hate for you to spend a whole day grinding this out get the premium time and then the next day you know is a work day and you're not able to, to actually take advantage of the premium time mission number two earn 3,000 capture points in any number of battles 
again, it's just a take some time, right? Um, this one could be more difficult for others than not. Remember that capture points are also um, earned while defending a sector. So if your sector, you know, you got a blue sector, a blue garrison, because garrisons win games, and you've got that blue sector, and some of the capture points have been lost, if you defend it, and you kill an enemy aircraft in it, you gain back some capture points, and those count towards this mission. You earn uh, some um, premium consumable there. Mission number three deals 75,000 hit points of damage to aerial targets in any number of battles. I would highly recommend take out your your highest damage output heavy fighter that you have and just take that and, and keep grinding. Personally, I'm going to take out the javelin and hopefully get that knocked out in like seven battles. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Get some airframe elements, which I'm at the position now where <laughs> parts for specialization are really few and far between. So I'm actually excited about the airframe elements. Mission number four, destroy 150 aerial targets in any number of battles. So once you've completed those first three, you can work on mission number four. It just says aerial targets. That's nice. Aerial targets are air defense aircraft. Bombing runs uh, is also going to be your, your obviously your uh, red enemy aircraft. 150 of those. Take out an aircraft that's just good at taking down enemy aircraft. For me, that's typically going to be a fighter of some sort. Uh, typically more of a turn fighter for my play style, an A7M. Uh, that kind of thing is, is to, um, A6M5, those kind of things are going to get a bunch of air targets in a battle and be good. Speaking of fighters, mission number five is an Akamatsu medal. So remember, this is earning 400 capture points while flying a fighter in a single sortie. Um, Akamatsu, I tend to enjoy flying my fighters, so I've got quite a few Akamatsus. It won't be difficult for me to earn. But like any medal in the game, when you're trying to earn it, that's when it becomes difficult. When you're just casually flying around, Postal's got hundreds of Akamatsus. When I'm trying to earn one, that's when, you know, all the enemies focus me down or, um, you know, I'm just not able to get the kills that I want to get. So it's one of those medals, like so many medals that you, you have to earn. Just chill and, you know, eventually you'll be able to get it as long as you have a general idea of what you're doing. You, go, you can get some boosters. Uh, this one, you actually get improved credit booster, which is really, really nice. Mission number six, destroy 100 segments of ground target in any number of battles. You're in a premium consumable. Um, so 100 segments of ground targets, take out your bomber, take out your ground attacker. That's going to be your best bet if you're trying to do this efficiently. Yes, multi-rolls can do it, um, but multi-rolls get pulled into air combat quite a bit. Yes, technically heavy fighters can do it, but most heavy fighters aren't built around doing ground damage at all. And to an even greater extent, they're pulled into air combat. Bombers and ground attackers are going to be your best bet to get 100 segments of ground uh, targets. And that's what I highly recommend if you're trying to be efficient with this mission. Mission number seven, destroy 30 enemy multi-role fighters in any number of battles. Thank goodness it's any number of battles. What's really awesome is you get 30 tokens out of this. This one might be one of the easier ones. Multi-role fighters are the most abundant aircraft on the enemy team right there's typically two bombers two ground attackers as tier four and above two bombers two ground attackers two heavy fighters two fighters right so there's eight aircraft that means the other four are going to be multi-role fighters and sometimes you know it's it's up and down from there very rarely is there only three multi-role fighters and very rarely is there five multi-role fighters but that happens from time to time because World of Warplanes allows those planes to respawn, it's not like you can only get four multi-roll kills and gosh darn it, so they stole my multi-roll kill, right? They're going to respawn. You can get three or four multi-roll kills every single battle. And if you're specifically going out of your way to kill them, maybe even more. Keep in mind, though, that doesn't mean go getting yourself killed just to go get one multi-roll fighter kill, right? It's better for you to stay alive, defend yourself, defend your friends, if you're alive, you're going to get more multi-roll kills than just going off and killing yourself for one multi-roll fighter and then spending 60 seconds reloading into the battle. 30 tokens is pretty exciting. Mission number eight, we're halfway done. Destroy eight enemy aircraft while defending sectors in a single battle. So we go from one of the easier missions to one of the more difficult ones. Remember, this is eight enemy aircraft, so it can't be air defense aircraft. It can't be a bombing run. It has to be the enemy aircraft. While defending sectors in a single battle, you get a supply crate. The, the easiest way to do this is to go take a, a defense type fighter, go to an enemy sector that's right near a spawn point or close enough to a spawn point and camp out there in your A7M or your Ki-84 or Yak-15 or 
A6M5 or freaking Spitfire or whatever. And what happens is when the bots are spawning, they're coming towards that garrison that you're hanging out in, or if there's a centrally located airbase for whatever reason, everybody and their brother likes going there. Hang out there where you know all the, the enemy aircraft are going to keep spawning and coming towards. As long as you own that sector, you're going to be killing enemy aircraft in your sector and you're getting those defense kills. If they own the sector, then obviously you're not getting defense kills, you're getting attack kills. So just be mindful of that and make sure the kills are happening inside the sector circle. The enemy has to be inside the sector circle. You don't necessarily have to be. But you want to be you know, somewhat inside the sector so you're drawing them in. Mission number nine, participate in capturing 50 sectors in any number of battles. Take a plane that's going to capture sectors quickly, right? Uh, typically, that's ground attackers and bombers. But really, any plane, I, I for this mission, whatever plane is you're most comfortable in. Uh, Saturday night, I was streaming, and I forget what fighter I took out. What was it, the P-80? I don't even remember. But, I mean, I captured six sectors in it, right? So sometimes the battles are just going to be around you capturing sectors. You could go out in your ground attacker and only capture one or two sectors because your team steamrolls or because you just keep getting killed by the enemy heavy fighter. So just go out there in whatever plane you're grinding. Focus on capturing the sectors as you should be anyway. ABC, always be capturing. And you'll get this, this mission. Get advanced polished skin, which is pretty darn nice. Mission number 10, receive the Flying Guardian Badge. You get uh, some boosters. So what is the Flying Guardian Badge? The Flying Guardian Badge is um, the, it's actually very similar to this. Um, the Flying Guardian Badge is earned by defeating or killing eight enemy aircraft while defending a sector. However, it can only be done in a multi-role or a fighter. Um, good thing about both mission 8 and 10 is it's not like it needs to be done in a single sortie. So if you die, you die. Uh, but the reality is Flying Guardian Badge is is can only be done in a fighter or a multi-role fighter. And so you just want to be aware of that. Defending a sector against eight enemy aircraft is the goal there to earn that Flying Guardian Badge. Mission number 11, earn 3,000 capture points for destroying ground targets in any number of battles. So this is a little nuanced difference between a previous one where you just earned 3,000 capture points. What mission was that? Mission number two. This one is specific for destroying ground targets. So unlike those previous missions where you can earn them with defending the sector, this one you need, you need to be in a ground attacker, you need to be in a bomber, Again, yes, multi-role fighters and to a lesser extent heavy fighters can technically do this, but it's going to take you forever. If you're in a BF-110E, like you've got two freaking bombs. Like how quickly are you going to... And they take three minutes or something ridiculous like that, at least two minutes to, to reload. No, at least I think it's... Th anyway, whatever. Too long. You want to be in a ground attacker. You want to be in a bomber. They're, all they do is, is air damage, basically. And so utilize those two plane types to get this particular mission sooner rather than later you get some premium consumables again so yay for that mission number 12 earn a hundred thousand personal points in any number of battles there's going to be people out there that look at this and go cool i can get that done in five in five battles there's going to be some people out there that are like shit it's going to take me a freaking hundred battles um <laughs> Take out the plane that you're just most comfortable in. Take out the plane that you enjoy flying, uh, whether it's a plane that you're grinding or a plane that you're, you fall back to because the SE-100 is awesome or whatever plane you absolutely love. Do not stress out about, oh, you know, somebody stole my kill and I only got 7,000 instead of the 8,000 I should have gotten, whatever. Like, don't stress out about these missions. They're not worth it. 100,000 personal points will come to you eventually. Just keep on grinding and uh, you'll get this one. Mission number 13 Receive the Flying Revenge Badge. What is the Flying Revenge Badge? Flying Revenge Badge is earned in either ground attackers or bombers. Uh, depending on which you're flying, it's the amount of parts of ground targets that you destroy. So each little building. Um, flying Revenge, ba Revenge Badge can be earned with a ground attacker when you destroy 100 ground tar uh, parts of ground targets in a battle. With a bomber, you need to destroy 150 parts of ground targets and so whichever you're more comfortable in flying revenge badge can be earned in either the ground attacker or the bomber whatever you're you know you're better at feel free to take that out you get 30 tokens which again is always super nice and but again it can only be done in ground attackers and bombers 
Mission number 14, destroy eight enemy fighters in a single battle. This might be really difficult. Uh, your best bet is probably going to be somewhere between tier 4 and tier 6, just because you tend to run into, you have the opportunity to run into more fighters in those, in that range. Why is it, could this be very difficult? Well, again, it's only enemy fighters, so air defense aircraft don't count, even if it's the red air defense aircraft. It can only be the enemy fighters. And as we mentioned before, typically there's only two enemy fighters on, an, on the team. Tier 4 through 6, sometimes there's three, depending on what humans you run into. But even if they're respawning, and if everybody's on mission 14, and luckily not everybody's going to be on mission 14 at the same time, but if there's only two on the enemy team, you really have to go out of your way to kill them. And once the squall line happens, you can only get them killed one more time each. So if, if you don't have six enemy fighter kills by squall line time, you just can't get this mission done. This one's going to take me the longest, I'm willing to bet. Probably going to take a lot of people the longest. Well... You could you could luck into it on your you know first or second time right like if everything lines up properly but this one's going to be the te the tedious one this one's going to be the one that either it happens or it doesn't happen you're going to have less control over this one than a lot of the other battles yeah it might take you forever to get three thousand capture points while earning ground um you know destroying ground targets it might take you forever to you know, get get some of these missions done 150 air targets or 100 thousand personal points. But it can be done if you have a bad game, whatever, you move on to the next one. Eight enemy fighters in a single battle, It's gonna. there's going to be some battles where I'm going to get seven and I'm going to be like, all right, let's do that again. Um, and that kind of stuff's going to happen. Hopefully not. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I can get it relatively quickly. But I also know that it's going to, it's determined by the enemy as much as it's determined by me. It is what it is. You get three supply crates. That's kind of cool. See what kind of goodies we can get in that. Mission number 15, last but not least, receive the McCampbell Medal. I like this particular medal. Um, it's one that you have to think about, but it's also not one that's like ridiculously difficult. A Gabreski or a Golubev can be ridiculously difficult. McCampbell Medal is um, kill 10 aerial targets in a single battle. I don't recall if it's in a single sortie or not. Um, but you do need to destroy one of each aircraft type. So you need to kill at least one ground attacker, one bomber, one heavy fighter, one multi-role fighter, and one regular fighter. And then five of whatever else. So you could kill like, you know, one of each of those and then five more fighters if that's what you get stuck in. Typically, whatever plane I'm in, I actually have to think about that fifth type. Like, I might have gotten all the kills and, oh my god, I need to kill a bomber. Um, or, you know, whatever it might be. So I like this one because you do have to think about it. You have to go out of your way to get it, but it's not like ridiculous to attain. The Campbell Medal will earn you the fifth mission, which gets you Elise Clark, plus some boosters for crew training, and then, then you got her. Uh, by the time I get this, I'm definitely going to have my P-51D specialized just because I don't want to put her in a non-specialized plane. And in, the missions aren't too crazy. They are going to take some time. Nobody's going to get this done in, in a couple days. Uh, but it's intriguing. It's a very intriguing, unique skill set that she has here. Um, it's definitely something I'm going to mess around with. I'm more intrigued by the maneuverability expert, or maneuver expert, excuse me, skill than I am the P-51D master skill. Although the 10% range, the 10% range is definitely going to make a bigger difference than the accuracy. Just getting more range on those machine guns is going to be noticeable. Uh, it was the first thing I noticed when they buffed the American machine guns across the board. It's definitely the range more than the DPS, simply because if you're able to reach out a little bit further, um, everything's gravy at that point. So I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Are you guys excited? I I like the fact that it's a pilot for a plane that I don't think is overly good. I, I question when they put in the, the game pilots for like ME410s and Tornadoes and A6M5s and LA5s. Like, those are all planes that were already seen as in their niche, heavy fighter, multi-role fighter, um, very strong planes for their plane type. So it was like getting a pilot for it was like, well, like I've already got a nine point pilot. Now you're making that nine point pilot and, and now I'm gonna make the plane even stronger with this unique pilot. Elise Clark being a pilot put into a relatively weak tier seven fighter actually has me excited, makes me wanna go out and play it. What they this is what they should be doing. They should be making pilots for things like a 
you know, TA-152 or SU-9, you know, planes that nobody really enjoys playing anymore. Uh, the TA-152 is only good once you've got like a 12-point pilot. The SU-9 is only good, I don't know when. Um, so, you know, making pilots for planes that, that aren't seen as super strong already makes sense. And maybe we'll see more P-51Ds out flying around and about. Um, rather than more ME410s. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick summary of it, and I will con I will uh, definitely be grinding to get her starting tomorrow. Yeah, and we'll see you on some uh, future live gameplay. I'll definitely be streaming, trying to grind her on the upcoming live streams on Twitch, so feel free to follow me there. And I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.